1980, if you skateboarded, you were hated. Dwayne took on the idea and the feeling of that time. It was rebellious, it was aggressive, and it was on edge, you know? It's not the way it is now. Now it's Little League. Unlike the way skateboarders are perceived today, the skaters of the 80s were never taken seriously for their courage. They got no love and no sympathy for the frustration from being banned in the streets and on the sidewalks where their boards were born. You know, you against the world, you against your parents, you against every 7-Eleven clerk. I mean, if you had your skateboard, you were marked. You know, there weren't as many contests, there was no money to be made in it, not that anyone did it for that, but it just like, the whole thing kind of petered out a little bit. During the early 80s, Dwayne was at his competitive best as the widespread popularity of skateboarding descended into a downhill slide. These were the days when Dwayne did what the skateboard world remembers him for. He made the park era come to life. With a Nazi-like appearance and a fuck you attitude, he grabbed skateboarding by the balls and gave it back to the skaters. The whole attitude of Thrasher came out of Dwayne and Olsen's persona and the whole punk rock underground movement. And the fact that Dwayne was around and, and practically a mascot for Thrasher magazine, I mean, just the epitome of the attitude and where it was coming from. The name Thrasher, I, I think, came out of Dwayne's mouth. They call it Thrasher. The act of thrashing, skateboarding, it's gnarly, it's raw, Thrasher. You know, he, he had attitude when he skated, aggression, punk rock, and, and all that. He's a great skateboarder, and probably, more importantly, he fucking won contests. Skating to me, it's just so hard to judge, you know. He has a very competitive style, you know. His style kind of came from all of those bowl contests. At that point in skateboarding, style pretty much dominated everything. The tricks were almost pretty standard. And uh, what he did was push them right to the edge. Those contests were pretty intense. You know, those guys would come out, they'd be bloody. Crowds were small, but just yelling and screaming and shitting their pants right along with the skaters. It was parks and it was cement and it was pools and kinks and coping and upland death sessions where I think everybody would slam. And then the heat of the battle and the Gold Cup series against Eddie Alguera and Grisham and guys that were kind of going out that were some of the greatest skateboarders that have ever lived. Wayne Peters, second on the Pro Series in skateboarding right now on the vertical or the bowl uh, competitions. You're going to be up against Eddie Alguera, the number one man, pretty soon, probably in the finals today at the High Roller Park. How do you feel about coming up against Eddie once again? I'm not scared or anything. He doesn't bother me. I just got to make all my tricks. And because, um, like, he's got all his own tricks and I got mine. And if I pull him off as high as I can, you know. It's all just a matter of who gets the gnarliest and who goes for it more, I guess. You know, I'm just going to try and compete and do my best. Dwayne kept it simple. Bare bones, all style, all attitude. He had a reputation for doing his own thing, inventing most of the tricks that he performed. Dwayne came out with the fakey thruster, the sweeper, the in the air, the invert revert, the acid drop. His unplanned physicality was unmistakable. This style saturated his attitude and his showmanship. Without further hesitation, we'll bring in the master of disaster from Santa Cruz, Dwayne Peters. First day, Dwayne would be one, two, or three, pretty much guaranteed. And this was against a pretty hot group of skateboarders. They really had to be on their game. If you wanted to compete, you had to have something new. You had to have something that nobody else was doing. Invert reverts and 
stuff like that. That trick was invented on accident because you just hang on to anything. You saw a lot of new blood coming in and the team rivalries. And you know, you had the Sims team with Bowman, Andrick, and Lamar, and you had the Powell Peralta team with Mike McGill and Ray Bones Rodriguez. And then you had the Verabots with Eric Grissom and Eddie Algara. And then all of a sudden you had the Santa Cruz team, man. It was just punk as shit with Salba and Olsen and Dwayne. They were the guys that kind of brought the old school into the new school, but yet they still performed and did what needed to be done to win. You know, that's what makes, I think, competition interesting, is that when somebody just has a totally different approach to things. Yeah, the big oak gold cup, man, that was, that was Dwayne's day. You know, nobody could have beat him on that day. He stayed on, he rode faster than anybody, he used his original tricks with more style than anybody. And it was perfect. With his music to, the, to what he was doing, it just blew everybody away. It was all about crowd appeal. Dwayne had the whole place standing up and just holding their heads going, oh my God. The Gold Cup series was sort of the, the the series right then. You know, it was it was pro and am. It was all the best guys. It was it was at all the main parks. It, it had the biggest coverage. I mean, when you look back at what the coverage was, it's nothing compared to what coverage is today. But to us, it was like there were banners, and you know, it was in the magazine. So that was a huge event. Back in the day, competitions was everything. I mean. It made you who you were, really. It was all about your contest places. You know, it was all about how you, how you fared against everyone else, and how you were judged. And now, nowadays, people get like a year, maybe two years, to film parts for a video to collect footage. We had 45 seconds to bust out. That's all we had. If you fell in that 45 seconds, you're out. You're not going to make the finals. And then Dwayne came on, just like this unknown storm. You never planned to run, didn't figure things out, you know. That's why I like Dwayne, because he just, he just throws all the rules out the window, he just does what he does, and it just comes to him, you know. He's got two tricks, and then after that, it's just whatever, you know. He just barely pulled off everything, but really he was in total control of the whole thing at all times. I think when Dwayne came around, uh, skateboarding was kind of like saved. <laughs> you would have the audience like jamming, like screaming at the top of their lungs because Here's the dude who almost killed himself, and now he's pulled it off, and now he's gonna maybe kill himself on the next wall. I think that gives you a crazy amount of energy as well. For example, while most pros practice and hone their formulaic runs, Dwayne would pull up to the contest in a VW with a swastika painted on the hood, ignore his pounding hangover, skip his practice runs, and blow on by the roll-in channel to an acid drop into the deepest part of the pool. From there, he'd just go where his guts and lines led him. Dwayne's skating carried a great element of surprise and spontaneity, and the crowds ate it up. And the rad thing is, during the contest, they didn't really have music that we wanted to listen to. And because this new thing was coming from the streets, we wanted to listen to our own music. So we were the first guys to actually go, look, you know, here's our cassette. I'm going to listen to the germs right here from my run. And Dwayne's all, you know, here's my cassette. I'm going to listen to Black Flag. <laughs> I remember going to the events and I was just so overwhelmed, never seen so many skaters in one place. There wasn't any comparison. We'd show up late, probably half in the bag, wouldn't take a practice run, nothing. Just do ass to drop into the deep end and go, man. Guys non-fucking stop. Going 
everyone was focused on competition then, so it was there was strategies, you know, and people were like, I'm gonna see my best stuff for last. It seemed like Dwayne just went all out every time. I think those guys, Dwayne especially, like was performing rather than competing. It was how you did things and how you looked and how you acted that was more important than what you did almost. I think that's skateboarding. And Dwayne never held back, but Dwayne didn't fall, so he was always in the finals. He was just so sketchy, he would just go for shit, and but then he would make it. I'd say that after the Gold Cup, there hasn't really been a, a contest format or series as intense, as competitive as those days.